story to tell you too. All right. Cool All right. beans. Welcome everybody to Let's Talk Racing. We got Scott, we got Colin, we got Al, and we got myself. And Al said he's already got a great story to go. Rock got on. Got a great story to say about the media tour. Okay. All right. Media tour started on Tuesday. I went to Charlotte a couple of days early, and on Monday afternoon, for some inexplicable reason, the battery in my car died. I was at a shopping center not far from where Kevin Cunningham lives, uh -huh. and my battery died. So I called him, and he came over and gave me a jump start, and I stayed with Kevin and his wife that, that night and a couple other nights. So the next day, I went to the right, went to the media tour downtown, Charlotte Convention Center, parked. I was the first one there, and I parked right by the place where you drive in and get your ticket. Uh -huh. I was right by the front door. Right. I was as close to the front door as you could get. And I come out about eight hours later to get in my car to drive to the drag strip for a media event. And my battery's dead again. <laughs> Jeez. So I say a few bad words and I put I put some stuff in the car. I go back upstairs and I get a media buddy of mine who's got a truck and a jumper cable to come down and help me, you know, start my car. And as we come out the front door or the side door of the convention center, there's a NASCAR Sprint Cup driver standing out on the curb. Cold as cold as hell. And, and he and we said, hey, how you doing? Oh, I'm, I'm okay. Do you need anything? Well, my ride has left me. Uh, my PR guy was supposed to take me somewhere, and he's not here yet. He looked at his watch and said, Arr. So, well, I, I'd be glad to help you, but my battery's dead. He said, well, don't worry about it. You know, he'll be here eventually. So, this friend Mike Neff and I, Mike went around and got in his truck. Mike drove around. And he couldn't quite, the, the jumper cables were about, <clears throat> about a yard too short. Couldn't quite reach from his truck to mine. And this Sprint Cup driver was kind of looking around the corner thinking, these two guys, they don't have a clue. They don't know what they're doing. So he comes back around and he says, hey, look, why don't you bring the truck around here? I'll block traffic. You can kind of get in, the, get in the exit lane of the Hall of Fame. I'll block traffic. And you can easily connect the cables. Oh, okay, that's cool. This guy's very nice, very polite. Yeah. And so I put the hood up on my car. Mike puts the hood up on his truck. And and Mike and I are a couple of, I mean, we're media guys. We don't know anything about equipment. <laughs> so we get, we, we know enough that the cables go where they go. And so Mike puts, tries to put his cables on the poles of his battery. And, and he finally gets a little spark in and I go over and try to get mine on, and I can't, I can't see. It's dark, so I couldn't, I couldn't quite see what I was doing. And instead of blowing up my battery, the guy said, the driver said, "Here, let me, let me do that." So he kind of shoves me out of the way, <laughs> looks at me, kind of grins. I can't wait to see who it is. Uh, and and he he uh, he takes out his cell phone, puts a flashlight on it. Yeah. Which I can't, I don't know how to do that on mine. You got it, but you just... Yeah, right, you I, I, I got it, I just don't know how to do it. <laughs> you gotta have the app. He puts the light down there and he says, God, you're corroded cable. These are, the poles are just corroded like crazy. I said, okay. So he takes a, a, a key out of his pocket and he starts to to buff the cable. Yeah. Right. To get all the crud off. He, yeah. God, what are you doing? Jeez. So he does both of them. He gets them and he finally, he, he puts it on there. Puts it on there. Okay, try it now. Mm -hmm. Wasn't quite going. So it goes back over to Mike's truck, and, and all and this guy's all dressed up to go somewhere. Uh -huh. And so he goes over to Mike's truck and says, "Hell, yours is the same way." He starts cleaning off Mike's post. He finally gets a good connection. My car cranks right up. Perfect. Great. So he he said, "Hey, out. You guys stay in the car. Don't get out." So he disconnects the cables, wraps them up, gives them to Mike, puts down my trunk, my, my lid, my uh, hood, yeah. and puts mm -hmm. down Mike and says, okay, you guys go on, just, you know, for God's sake, don't tell anybody I did this. <laughs> so Mike and I drive off. Guess who it was? Terry Labonte. Gordon. 
Current driver or Logano? retired? Tony Stewart. No freaking way. <laughs> Tony Stewart. And you could, love him. Could not have been nicer. Wow. Wow. And he was Absolutely dressed. Absolutely could not have been nicer. Dressed up, ready to go somewhere. And, and finally, when my car got cranked, I was running. Mm -hmm. He said, I said, I'll be glad to take you where you need to go. He said, no, my, my guy's on his way. He just called me. <laughs> I said, I'm glad he said this. Just don't tell anybody what I did. So I haven't. So now you did tell Well, him. you did now. I hadn't told anybody. You didn't say that. But he you could did. not have been nicer. Oh, and then yes. the next day, or two days later, during his media tour moment, um, I was standing by the his big microphone, and he came by and he pitched me on the ass. <laughs> he said, That's he said, hey. I said, hey, thanks. <laughs> tell anybody. He said, he told me later on, he said, it might ruin my reputation. <laughs> so this was like shortly after he had gotten into that big deal with the Chili Bowl. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and he talked about that. Did he know both you guys were reporters? You know, well? you know, I... Or do you I, think he just kind of thought, y'all could have been anybody? I, 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 he knew me. Yeah, so he knows him. Well. Well. Okay. And he also okay. knew that we don't know nothing about machinery. <laughs> okay. Well, that became obvious. And you guys just don't <laughs> yeah. even... Get away. Tony was probably it's the guy who tried to out. crack up laughing yeah. about the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he said, uh, get away. Just let uh, me do this. Get away. But... And I, I, I think so Roger, you fit the stereotype that he probably thought about I think reporters Roger, anyway. I, I think Roger heard me say this. <laughs> you get him away from a racetrack, uh, oh, he's a it. great guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He absolutely mm -hmm. would be, he, he'll charm birds out of a tree. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've seen him early in the morning, which he hates to do. I've seen him do early, early morning, by that I mean 8 o'clock, media events at the Speedway at Daytona in which children yeah. are involved. Uh -huh. It'd be a chair, like that rod and reel thing yeah. he does, a uh -huh. fishing deal. He he is absolutely as good as anybody's ever been. But once he walks in that garage area and puts on that fire suit, he's all business. That's a, that's the job. He don't want anything to do with anybody mm -hmm. except, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Well, I, I have caught him before while he's on in his driving set, but it's usually at the Denny Hamler race because then he's he's like a kid in a candy store just having yeah. fun with everybody. Yeah. And. When he gets doing stories, oh my God! And when he starts picking on the officials, you, you just, I can't, I can't bear to video it because I'm having too much fun yeah, yeah. being a part of it, and then I just feel like I'm intruding if I go to video it. Yeah. And, and, and the beauty of it was, neither Mike nor I asked him to help us. You know, we're not going to ask Tony Stewart no. to help us get our battery charged. We figured, I mean, eventually we would have done it. We figured if you looked pitiful enough, been, maybe might have been two hours, hours. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Help you out. But, 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 he, but he, he kept looking over and he kept oh, seeing us. He finally said, He's like, this is hilarious. Just get away. You don't even know where the batteries yeah, on the yeah, car. You get in your truck, you get in your Honda, get away, and I'll do it. And, uh, and man, these posts are just awful. And he started buffing them up with, yeah. his, with the key off, off of his, out of his pocket. So, uh, um, and then on his on his media interview on Thursday, he talked for an hour, which is way more than we expected. And and as I expected, he 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 did not he would not address the chili bowl deal. He just said, "This is a NASCAR media event. We're talking about the 2016 season. We're not talking about last weekend." If you want to know what happened at the Chili Bowl, get a credential and go yourself. Meaning, I'm not going to tell you what happens there. It's, it's a great deal. And he said, everything that's been written and said about it had been written and said. I'm not going to add anything to it. I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not going to add or take away from it. But what happened is what yes, happened, and that's the mm -hmm. end of it. Yeah. And he could, and he was very honest about that. But he he was so engaging. He says that, he said I've got a bucket list. I need to I need to check things off my bucket list, and I can't have a bucket list as long as I'm driving a, a Sprint Cup car. Uh -huh. um, you know I want to go to Monte Carlo. I want to see a F1 race. I want to do some some dirt track racing again. I want to get in a dirt late model. I want to get in a Sprint car. You know I want to do a lot of things I can't do as long as I'm driving a Cup car. And and and. The thing that surprised me about Tony was he, he seems to have set this year's goals very realistically. 
well, very low actually. He said, he said Jeff Gordon had was within Jeff Gordon had a ninety percent you betcha dream season last year. Yep. If I could do what Jeff Gordon did last year, I'll be happy. Meaning, if I won a, a pole or two, yep. a race, and make the Homestead final, yeah, I'll be happy. Yeah. He said. The only thing we want to do is get better than we have been. Think the new coach will do it? And I'm thinking that's pretty easy to beat. You know, I mean, if you, you, because this, this downforce package they've given him, he'll love it. Right. I mean, it's not, it's not enough for him. There's still too much spoiler. There's still too much front balance. But he, he, he will, he will do better with a car that you've got to drive instead of just steer. Yeah. yeah, and and that's what this downforce package apparently is going to do. It's going to make it's going to make great drivers great again, and it'll keep good drivers like just okay. Yeah. And, and I think the gap between the guys who are really talented yeah. and those who are just marginally talented will be even even bigger. But Tony says there are enough of the really great guys to put on a terrific show. So. Good deal. Cool. Anyway, that's my that's my media tour story. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Who we got on the line? Hello. <laughs> Who we got? It's Dominique. Oh, hey Dominique. Why don't you go ahead and introduce hey. introduce yourself to everybody and uh, give us a little background bio on your racing. My name is Dominique Van Wieringen. I've been racing since I was about five years old. Started out in motocross. Uh, stopped doing that when I was 10. Transitioned into go-karts for five years and then went straight into big body LL late models and been in cars for the last five years. I understand this year you're going to be running the K&N East Series. Yep. How'd that come about? Well, we've been t I've been talking with uh, both Margaret and Terry Jones at the end of last year, and the last couple months of last year, we were figuring out that we could do this can end deal this year, and just over the last couple months, it came to fruition, and now here we are with the full can end season. All right, hey, Dominique, this is uh, Kyle Brown, local legend car driver in Virginia. Mm -hmm. um, so, with this being your first year in K&N, uh, what goals have you set regarding your finishes this year? And uh, can you uh, maybe even realistically win a race? And uh, what uh, would a successful season be? Well, me and all of Brett Jones Racing are all under the same goal of going for the championship this year. And we're planning on winning more than one race this year. That's for sure. And if we we just want to do as best as we can and we know we're gonna be good and we're gonna be competitive and there's a lot of good drivers in K N this year and also a lot of female drivers, so it's gonna be interesting and I can't wait because there's a lot of new tracks and it's gonna be a lot of fun. So um so talk about your uh major at UNC Charlotte and uh What's it like, and uh, do they still put a car um, on the at, on some races? And uh, what are your chances, and uh, maybe even driving one of those cars that UNC Charlotte has? Uh, right now, with their mechanical engineering and uh, motorsports program, they have the SAE uh, car going competition, which I believe is every couple of years. And I was asked to be a driver last year. But it was at the same time as the Berlin 251. So there's a possibility for me to drive a couple of their cars, but it just depends on if it conflicts with my race schedule. So how has uh, but, being an uh, engineer student helped you with uh, maybe relate to your crew? With, uh, it definitely helps a lot. Uh, there's, like I learned a whole bunch of different stuff, and right now I'm kind of hitting more of the kind of basic stuff, but getting more into it with, like, yeah, thermodynamics, but one of my classes this semester is tire mechanics, so now I get to learn more about the tires than I have previously, where before I just knew, 
Yeah, and we got tires. Now I actually will learn everything about the tire. So it definitely helps to have that information and experience to go along with each other. Dominique, where are you from originally? You don't sound like you're from the South. No, I'm not actually. I'm a foreigner. I am from Amherstburg, Ontario, Canada. Oh, okay. Way up north, and I might say like a funny word here or there. I don't say A, but my outs sound funny. Who's the greatest hockey player of all time? Oh, I'm not a hockey person. <laughs> oh. Oh. You're from Canada? You don't know who Wayne Gretzky is the greatest hockey player? But I bet you know. I know him, but I don't know hockey that well. I bet you know Ron Fellows, don't you? I do. Okay. Well, then that's okay then. She knows mm -hmm. Ron Fellows. Well, that's racing. <laughs> yeah, he's a great road racer. Yeah. What, um. Exactly. Yeah, now you, you live in Charlotte now, obviously. Um. Mm -hmm. if, if you're trying to become a racer from Canada, and there have been a fair number of them, do you almost have to live in Charlotte or in the southeast? You can't, you can't commute from up there, can you? No, and in general, from what me and my family have learned from racing, it's better just to come to the States because your talent level is so much huger down here, even just up in northern parts of the United States, that we learned it from the get-go, all right, we got to race in the States, and as we were in cars for a while, we learned that, hey, there's even more down in the south, southern area, and that's why I moved down here, because there's a lot more. Now, which tracks in particular, now you're going to a lot of tracks this year that you've never been to, um, mm -hmm. which ones are you looking most forward to, which ones are you thinking, oh boy, that's not going to be a lot of fun, or, or are you taking everything as an open book with, with no preconceived notions of what things are going to be like? Well, I know there's a lot of tracks that I'm really interested in running, like a bunch of the road courses, because I've done go-karting on road courses, but never a full-size car. And I'm definitely excited for Bristol, because I love those high bank ovals. But I don't have any tracks where I feel like, mm, I don't, I don't, I'm not too sure about this. I'm more excited for every different track we go to because I've never been to them before, and each one has a different personality. Do, do, have you tried this little the um, the eye racing games? Have you have you practiced on any you know video type programs to learn these race tracks? I'm not very good at eye racing. I do a different way of studying and especially that the, a lot of the can n races were filmed last year that I go back and watch old videos of all, all the races and just study those and pick up the lines of the k and n cars on the track specifically. Okay. Now your season will open in at uh, New Smyrna Beach next month, is that correct? Yep. On oh. February the 14th. Oh, Valentine's Day. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I've forgotten they, they race down there. Yeah, that's what one of the first races we'll see for the new year. I think so. Yeah, yeah they, don't, they, don't, they no longer race on the back stretch at Daytona. They go to Barberville. They go, they, not Barberville. They go to um, New Smyrna. Yeah, in fact, our last guest, he's also going to be racing at New Smyrna. Oh, okay. Well, okay. So, uh, how, now, did you tell you how, how old were you? Are you? I am twenty. Twenty. You sound like you're like fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess that's a compliment, considering a lot of the drivers I'll be racing against are fifteen. <laughs> uh, well, you got to be as young as you feel anyway, and racing gets you old soon enough. Yeah. Is it is it fair to say that, that most young female racers, which includes you, I mean, is Danica so, sort of the the person you most look to, or does that not, not really matter a whole lot? It does, because she was a big role model for me, when I, especially when I was starting out in go-karts, because she's opened a lot of doors with what she's done, and she's definitely a great role model for a lot of 
aspiring female racers to look at and want to be like or even do better. She wouldn't be too hard to get better than she is. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just telling you. Well, you never know. They may want to have you there all the time, you know, doing interviews. I'm just saying, she's been in the cup three years and hasn't done a thing. But anyway, that's that's a sort. That's a topic for another night. <laughs> that's not a good one for tonight. So, are you? Have you been keeping up with all the uh, things going on out there in the NASCAR world with uh, the changes and everything, Dominic? Yeah, I've been seeing the different changes going on with the different things with the point system, the caution clock for the trucks. What, what's your what's your uh, on it a bit. what's your uh, input about the caution clock? I'm not. It's probably helpful for the bigger tracks where, like Talladega, where like after five minutes, like it's not much racing. Everyone's so far apart. So it's probably going to be a lot helpful for those tracks to make it more interesting. You're not just watching the cars go by one at a time. So. I think it's going to be useful for those bigger tracks, that's for sure. Huh. Are, are you part of the, the Drive for Diversity class? No, I'm not. Okay. Because they introduced a bunch of people at Charlotte last week. For some reason, I remember her, her name being mentioned, maybe not at that event, but maybe at some other point. Did you talk with Chris Knight any? Yeah, I did talk to Chris a lot. Chris would have talked about her because... Isn't Chris and I working with you, Dominique? Yeah, he's the one that's been setting me up with all different radio shows and stuff. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chris came up to me on the media tour and mentioned. Okay. Because okay. we kept we kept hitting and missing with you the past two weeks. <laughs> yeah, you guys had those technical difficulties last time. Oh, yeah. I, I just love computers. Um, did, uh, did you get a chance to meet uh, J.A. Jr.? Me who? I was, I'm asking Al. J.A.? J.A. Jr. He's uh, one of the guys that's on the drive for diversity. Uh -huh. uh, anyway, sorry about that. Uh, we had uh, one of the guys that we knew was on the show um, after the drive for diversity at Langley. And uh, <coughs> he was one of the ones that got selected. So we had talked with him last week. So, did you ever try to get into the drive for diversity? J uh, Dominique? She's still there? Dominique? Hello, Dominique. We may have lost her. The perils of computers again. Nah, that's phone lines. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Oh, oh, there you are. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. We thought we lost you. Yeah, I could hear you, but you guys couldn't hear me. That was strange. Yeah. Twilight Zone. Yeah, Ro Roger asked if you had ever tried to get into the diversity class, or whether you had... Do you apply for that, Roger? I don't even yeah. know. Yeah. Oh, you apply for it? Okay. You have, to, you have to forms fill out. You have to fill, send them in by a certain time. You got to be a certain age. Yeah. Level. So, did you ever, do you ever try that route? Do you ever try to get into the, the diversity crowd? Did we lose her again? <laughs> I hear static. Oh, there she is. So by the time I was told I could do it, it was too late to apply. Oh, okay. Yeah. Here. Okay, uh, Dick, was, your phone was kicking out again. No, it's her phone. Is that your phone? Not my phone. <laughs> <laughs> you still there? Dominique. You want to try to call back in real quick? There you go. Okay, well, there we go. I think we're done. Yeah, I think the end of that she one. She said, now I know why I didn't call two weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's not computers this time. Okay. Everything's running fine. 
with with Windows sometimes when they do updates it screws with drivers. And that's what happened. Because after after oh, uh, then she's going back. Yep. You there with us this time? Can you hear me? Yeah, we got it. Oh yeah. Okay. So what was the question again? <laughs> the <laughs> diversity yeah, thing. Yeah, we've already gone through that one a couple of times. Yeah. <laughs> so apparently you were late at getting in. Is that right? What's that? I said you were late at getting your form in or something? Yeah, I thought I couldn't because I was like uh, not American and then I was told that no, you can apply and then it was already too late that the, uh, they closed the application. Well, as always next year. Yeah, they, they would have preferred you not be an American. They're looking for, they're not looking for American drivers. They're looking for people from outside for that, mm -hmm. you know, to expand their fan base. Um, right. Now, you, you're in a motorsports-related program at UNC Charlotte. Is that, did I hear that right? Yep. Okay. H how many other females are in that program, and do you find you get any... Any pushback from the males who are there? There's only maybe five that I know of that are in the motorsports program, and even in engineering in general, there's only a handful of females. And the guys aren't really pushy about it or anything. I've actually found a lot of the teachers are really supportive of females in the engineering program, especially in the motorsports that. They try to push the females to do more stuff than our male counterparts. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know whether the, the guys in the class or the guys in the program thought, you know, what is she doing here? We're, we, you know, men are the race car drivers of the world. Um, this, you know, what is she doing here? But I, I guess there had been enough women to come through that program in years that uh, it's, it's probably not as unusual is it might have been 10 or 12 years ago. Yeah, I haven't found any guys that were kind of rude about me being in the program at all. In fact, they seem that it's pretty normal. Okay, good. One more thing, they have an inch of snow in Charlotte and the town closes up. I guess up <laughs> in Canada right now, if it's not five feet, it's not a, not a bad winter, correct? Right. It's kind of strange when you're up there, you could have a lot of snow and ice and you're still going to school, and down here it's just a little drizzle of snow, and everything shuts down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, let me go ahead and let you get out of here, Dominique. Go ahead and give a shout out to your sponsors, and uh, we'll go ahead and uh, let you go back to having fun. I got to thank my main sponsor, Durablight, the Rhett Jones Racing Crew, and uh, just my parents and everyone that have supported me along the way. It's going to be a good year. Cool. All right. We'll get back up with you next time and uh, get some more info on how things are going with you, okay? All right. Thank you so much. Thank right. you. We got Paul on the other line. Uh, good evening, Roger. How are you? I'm doing fine. You got Al Pierce and Colin Brown in the, in the house with us here also. How, how's it doing down under? Uh -huh. Still there? Yes, still there. Yes, yeah. oh. gotcha. Oh, okay. Uh, I was asking how you were doing down under. Uh, yeah, really good. We just had a big downfall last night, so yeah, it should be interesting. We've got uh, an Australian title for the sprint cars on this weekend, so hopefully that's not washed out. Good deal. It's summertime down there, Roger. Yeah, that, that's why they have the Australian Open down there, oh, too. Yeah. So, uh, give us a little bit, I know you've done some racing, why don't you give us a little background about that? Yeah, I got into racing when I was about six years of age. Um, I actually uh, went out, I actually drew on a piece of paper, um, my first contract, and I went to about 200 different shops and uh, picked up a company called Auto Pro as my main sponsor. Uh, then I started racing um, uh, through that sponsor. I built a brand new car 
safety equipment you brought in to help out the drivers. Um, how, did, how did you come across something like this being being designed? Uh, yeah, well, after my accident, I, a friend and I were in the back shed at his house, and we uh, found a axle blade, and we actually cut the first neck brace out of the block of foam. Uh, we took it down to a uh, neck brace uh, to a foam cutter. Uh, they actually cut it out for us and we actually attached it to the helmet. And uh, we had a geared go kart at the time. And um, yeah, I went, I was planning to go out for about 15 laps and I ended up going out for about 40 laps uh, with the cart. And yeah, I did three runs with it and I noticed that. Uh, each time I could stay out longer because I was able to lean on the device. Um, and going over the curves, I was able to hit them a lot harder. I wasn't feeling the impacts of going over the curves. Uh, the G-forces on the high corners it actually went up a hill, the racetrack. And as you come over the top of the hill, it actually turned to the right. And you couldn't see the actual drop. Um, so, yeah, it, the neck brace helped a lot in that because you could actually lean on the brace and as you come over the hill, um, and as it dropped down, you didn't, your head didn't get thrown to the other side from the uh, force of the landing. So, yeah, it made quite a big difference. And that's when we decided uh, we'll try and make this. And I went around to a lot of uh, companies um, showed them the idea um, and there was one company in Ballarat where I'm at at the moment uh, Hemco is the name of the company and they actually developed the first seatbelt and they actually helped me um, take it to a manufacturer and um, yeah that's how it got started basically just from knocking on doors and um, yeah, finding the right person in the end uh, hey, uh, Paul, this is Colin Brown, a legend car driver here in the U.S. Um, by the way, uh, happy belated Australia Day. No, thank you, yes. So, <laughs> um, quite a big day. So, uh, how well has it has your product been tested for uh, driver comfort, and uh, what kind of challenges have uh, come up with with it, like, say, at, like, uh, say adding to driver overheating and uh, or uh, comfort, uh, or like you say, driver wearing it for comfort for a few hours in a car? Yeah, um, the drivers that have used it have actually said that uh, the comfort of it is the most crucial part because they, sprint car drivers, uh, road drivers, they lean on the device quite a lot um, in the corners and yeah, they found that that actually helps quite a lot with the uh, comfort of it. Uh, the heating side of it, um, a lot of the drivers wear the air cooling system through the helmet, and what it does, it seals off the actual helmet, and it allows the air to just, it's actually designed underneath, with just at the front with a little U-shaped, area in the front of the neck brace of the collar and what that is designed to do is to let the air out and not allow uh, when you've got the air 
coming through the helmet that actually pushes the hot air out of the helmet and it can't allow the hot air in from the cabin. So it, what, what we found was the cold air was actually escaping out there and not allowing the driver was actually breathing the cold air back in that it just that had been released out of the bottom of the helmet. Uh, and also with karting uh, and sprint car racing, the drivers were saying uh, that they felt like they actually had a pipe going under the helmet because as soon as they got moving, the air actually hit uh, the two chin pieces and it actually went straight up and under the helmet and come straight into their mouth and was actually cooling them that way. So yeah, it's the drivers certainly said that it added a lot to the comfort um, and it also, uh, a lot of drivers in sprint cars were actually saying that high flutter uh, they get from the vibration of the track, uh, it was actually stopping that. So would this be say, maybe best also possibly for drag racing since they would have it on for a shorter period of time? Uh, yes, the drag racing, yeah, they, we've uh, just got to alter them a bit. Uh, we've got a new design coming out which allows us to custom make it in different pieces, uh, which helps the drag racing guys because they've got the, a lot of them wear the uh, breather, breather pot, uh, like filters at the front, and yeah, we can we can customise them to fit those helmets, um, but for drag racing, yes, it, it's very good because they lock themselves, they push back into the seat. The device, the new device we've got coming out actually goes up the back of the helmet quite a bit, and it actually, when they get pushed back, it actually locks them into the seat. That's, yeah, basically that part will sit and just fit behind the helmet, and it pushes that into the seat. And yeah, with the drag car racers, a lot of them have told us that uh, they don't have much movement and the only movement they've got is their head going back and that's probably the biggest problem they have is the force that the head gets thrown back when they take off. So uh, what do you do uh, for fun when you're, I'll show you, when, you, when uh, you're not at the racetrack? <clears throat> Uh, what do I do? Um, I spend probably 24 hours a day um, talking to uh, customers. Uh, basically, I'm just trying to raise money to get this product off the ground. And yeah, it's a lot of, unfortunately, uh, there's a lot of organising. And yeah, it takes quite a toll on me. I've, from my racing accident when I actually had seizures uh, from the accident I had. So yeah, it, it sort of makes it a bit hard for me and uh, I'm very lucky I've got financial director, uh, Matthew Toll and Ballarat, who actually controls a lot of the investors for us to raise the money to make this happen. But yeah, most of my time is either spent here or at the racetrack Paul, this is Al Pierce with Auto Week Magazine. Is is this a device? It, it I'm, I'm trying to look at it and, and understand whether can it be used in conjunction with the Hans device, or is it, or is it a separate device altogether? Uh, yeah, the new version we've got coming. Um, the one at the moment uh, can't. It's actually designed for carding. Um, and that's why it's a bit bigger than the new device, uh, the old device. Uh, the new one is smaller and it can actually fit inside the actual Hans device or the uh, backpack devices that can actually fit in quite nicely uh, to those devices if they want to wear them with them. Uh, we are probably in the next six months we're uh, working with a few companies at the moment and, and we're trying to develop the 38.1 system uh, for our device. So yeah, we're just uh, in the design stage and yeah, we've got a bit of work to do, but yeah, we've already done two tests and it, it looks quite good, the testing, so we 
just got to alter quite a few things and uh, then we should have a 38.1 system coming out. But yeah, it does, uh, it will change quite a bit the product okay. in the next probably six months. Now where, where are you located in Australia? between Melbourne and Adelaide, sort of in that that area. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Yeah, we're basically a quarter of the way to Adelaide. How, how big a deal was Marcus Ambrose when he came up here and raced in, in the States for five or six years or seven? Did y'all did y'all follow him pretty closely and sort of attach yourself to his good fortunes or bad fortunes, whichever? Basically, when he went across to America, it changed motorsport in Australia. And, um, Dick Johnson was probably one of the first ones that actually went over to NASCAR and had a go. Um, and it was, uh, he didn't have much success because he only went over for, I think, a race or two races. Um, but the popularity that came out of that when he came back, it actually changed his career. And, yeah, Marcus like everyone out here was just talking about Marcus Ambrose and uh, how much, you know, how well he's doing over there and yeah, people were sitting up till 3 o'clock in the morning just glued to the television trying to get results or, you know, watch his race and yeah, it changed a lot of, uh, that's probably why motorsports got so big in Australia now. Uh, because you now we've got Foxtel all that came in that sort of on the back of that because of the popularity of it. Now about 28 or 29 years ago I, I went to Melbourne to a NASCAR race at the Thunderdome. Uh -oh. Hang up. <laughs> I never lost him. I think he's calling again. There he goes. I don't think that's him. Is that Tyler? Yes, this is Tyler. Yeah, hang on a second, Tyler. We just uh, lost our, our connection to Australia. <laughs> oh, okay. We're going to see if he calls back. We'll finish up with him and then get with you. Okay, no problem. Or ask questions. <laughs> we may have lost him. We may have lost him. Yeah. I he kept having some problems when I was talking with him, too, on the cell phone. Maybe it's the whole out of country long distance connection. <laughs> what can you say? Not exactly like calling from Newport News. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, here he goes. There you go. We lost you there, Paul. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, the, the quite a bit out there. Yeah, the question I was going to ask you is uh, again, it was 30 years ago, and I, I went to a race down there. Um, is the Thunderdome racetrack still there? And I hate to ask a question that may give me bad news, but is Bob James still alive and still active? Uh, yes, Bob James is, is still alive. Um, but the Thunderdome, um, unfortunately, the Thunderdome is only used for drive days. Um, as, yeah, basically, they used to use it for the V8 supercars and now it, um, it basically has holes in the ground um, and weeds growing over it so they're saying that you know, they're going to have to probably do a bit to it just to do drive days but yeah it's sort of uh, run down quite a bit unfortunately but, but um, the Thunder Dome the biggest problem they had was that it uh, Melbourne actually grew that fast that it actually um, stopped them from racing to certain hours. Like they could only race till about 11 o'clock at night. And yeah, it was just the crowd numbers were just dropping off. And uh, the drag racing, uh, I think they do still hold one or two events a year there. Um, but that's about it. The sort of Sunday basically. 
place quiet then. Okay. I had a wonderful time down there. I, I flew down and stayed at the old Melbourne Hotel downtown and, and just had a great week down there and, and I always thought this would be a cool place to live. It's really, it's a nice, it's really fun down there. Al, you would be beside yourself because they don't have in and out hamburgers. Yeah, and I would not eat Vegemite if it was the last thing on earth. <laughs> <laughs> you could not, yeah, no. you could not make no, me eat that <laughs> stuff. No, I'm sorry. No. Vegemite's only good, I think, for grazing axles on cars, I would say. <laughs> it's awful. It's awful. I don't even know what it is, but I just know it was awful. I got a taste of it, and that was enough. <laughs> yeah, All right. it's a shocking product. All right, Paul, we're going to go ahead and let you get out of here, and uh, I hope to get back up with you some more. Um, let me know when you're going to try to get some samples set up this way for people to test out or something. I'm sure, I'm sure yeah, we, yeah, we have got some over there at the moment in America, so yeah, they are actually at quite a few. Uh, we were at the Chili Bowl, a uh, few of the major events we've been to, so yeah, they should be out uh, coming over there probably in the next month, the new one. Uh, uh, Colin, make sure you keep in touch with him, you know, oh, yeah, so you might get a sample yeah. to check out. Yeah, it doesn't have on the Legend Guard. No, definitely. I'll definitely try to. I'll keep in touch and, yeah, happy to come on the show any time for you. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. All right, thanks for joining us tonight, and we'll catch you again later. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye-bye. Good day. <laughs> you had to get that in. Should have said to start with. Oh, gosh. Uh, oh. So how hard was the accent to follow? Oh, I'm fine. Bad. I mean, it could have been worse. How you doing, Tyler? We're doing good. That, that, was our, that, was, that was our long distance call for the night from down under. <laughs> Anywho, go ahead and get, give so us where's some... He, where's he calling from? Where are you calling from, Tyler? Shit, you just asked him. Well, I'm sitting in my apartment in North Carolina, or Greensboro, North Carolina right now. Greensboro? Okay. You know where that is, right, Al? <laughs> okay, just check it. <laughs> On Holden Road is a place called Jake's Restaurant. Oh, gosh. Jake's Diner. <laughs> on Holden I Road. At the intersection of Holden, the intersection of Holden Road time. and High Point Road. Jake's yeah, Diner. I've been to Jake's Diner. You've been to Jake's? I have, yeah. Jake's is good. It is. Jake's yeah, is good. It's a great almost. Yeah, it's a great place. Anywho, go ahead and give us a quick bio about your racing career so that people will learn something about you, Tyler. Well, my racing career started when I was nine years old. I'm from I'm from Colton, California, so I grew up racing locally at the Orange Show Quarter Orange Show Quarter Club. And um, after a while, me and my dad we started getting rid into it and start buying loads of cars. And you know, I really started racing nationally, racing with kids like Todd Young and Anderson Burton actually I've been racing with those kids for a, a long time and you know actually two years ago I got into late model which is awesome you know Dave Gillen helped us out a lot with that getting our feet wet wet with the late model and I've had a lot of success in my career and it's been a lot of fun along the way now you're going to be uh when we were talking earlier, you're going to be down in New Smyrna for the beginning races down there this uh, next month, right? Yeah, I'll be racing in two weeks. Alright, are uh, you going to be running the Super Late model or? Yes, I'll be racing my Super Late model. And also, how old are you? Well, I'm 14 years old. I'll be turning 15 in March. <laughs> Boy, you gotta. You have to excuse this. Al's over here shaking his head. He just cannot believe how many of these young kids being into the racing as hard as it is. And with all the people we know, and it was back when you were in your thirties when you first started getting into some decent racing. The sweater I'm wearing is twice as old <laughs> as this kid is. I bought this sweater thirty years ago in Park City, Utah. This sweater is twice as old as this guy. 
I just can't get over it. When I was your age, I was riding a bicycle delivering newspapers, you know, hoping I could get through the ninth grade, and here you are driving race cars. It just doesn't seem fair. <laughs> you know, I talked to a few old timers and and they said, you know, I started driving my dad's pickup truck and doing donuts in the front yard when I was 15 years old, and I think that's funny because you don't see it, you see it more nowadays than you ever did back then. But I bet you I did one thing at age 16 that you've never done, and if you're smart, you never will do it. I outran a local cop. I went, I went through a speed trap in Rocky Mount, North Carolina when I was 16 years old and the cop had stopped somebody but he immediately jumped in his car and came after me and I could tell he was coming after me and I made a couple of little boogie turns here and yonder and ran home and drove in my garage and closed the door and I, I got away with it for like 18 hours but when I came out of school, when I came out of school the next day the cop was waiting for me because he, he had got my license number. Oops. <laughs> he, just, he let me go home and sleep on it. Right. So, anyway. At least you weren't carrying a load of shine now. And not that you knew. Either, no. <laughs> not that you knew. So, at, at age 15 now, this is, this is going to be a silly question, but I, I'm, I have to ask it. Ha, ha, have you set out a, a timetable or a... a benchmarks, you want to be doing something at age 16 and something else at 18, or is your career just wide open and you're not worried about when you get where? You know, a goal, first of all, mine would be to be driving a truck at the age of 16, and next year, possibly running ARCA and k &N. Cool. And you know, in moving up the ladder to there, because from there, because my ultimate goal is to become a drink cup driver. Well, you started at an early enough age, you're going to have a good enough head start. Yeah. Now, well, the only, the only thing. Young. The only thing I can see you're going to have a problem with is how much taller you're going to grow. That, that's been a, that's been quite a problem, especially with me and my race car. I got to get a new race seat almost every three months. It's, I just the height level. The guys that are sitting in the race shop and ask me how tall I am. But what? You got to get a new suit already. How tall are you? I'm five eleven. Five eleven. Right about there. Yeah. How tall are your parents? Uh, I'm well. What's that got to do with anything? Genetics. Huh? <laughs> Genetics. No, 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 but what? Yeah, genetics. I mean, I've seen drivers 6'6 six, six drive. Well, Ricky, Ricky Brew is not a big boy. Yeah. And Rico's can be pretty damn good. <laughs> yeah. So I would say height is not an issue. Mark Martin. No, not at all. Mark not, Martin was not very tall. Yeah. They both did a lot of left side weight in their car. And though, Buddy now. Baker was, so there you go. <laughs> anyway, go yeah, ahead. <laughs> I, I think I, I stood next to Kyle Larson before. He, I don't think when you can be a wheelman like Kyle Larson, size is not a huge factor. So, who's your uh, person you look up to? Your mentor? Oh man, that that's tough because I, I look up to everybody in the Spring Cup levels. You know, all levels. I mean. When you get to a certain point, all those drivers in that Spring Cup series, they're all great. Or any series. Jump in here, right, uh, hey Tyler, this is Colin Brown, a legend car driver down here in Virginia. So, um, he used to run USAG midgets before going to late models, and so, as far as driving skills, what are some things that uh, helped you when you transferred over to stock cars? Well, one thing that definitely helped me was the speed factor, you know. Coming from the quarter midget to the Honda midget, you know, you're getting me a lot of the momentum factor, you know. With these big stock cars, they have a whole lot of power and they're heavy. You know, those midgets, they were light and nimble. 
so they got around the racetracks about the same exact speed as late models. So that was one thing that definitely helps me. And also, you know, with the super late models, you know, they're they're known for their handling, and that's the thing that's in my wheelhouse is because going to the racetrack and the super late models about keeping that steering wheel as straight as possible. And the midgets is the same exact thing. It's just keeping all your momentum up. So you have uh, Ion cameras as uh, your sponsor. So tell us more about the camera and how it differs from other cameras on the market. And uh, what are some ways that you've used the Ion camera? It's, it's the newest technology of a camera, you know. I was down at New Samurai yesterday testing my super late model and I had cameras everywhere, you know, on the walls, outside, on the outside walls. I had cars, I had cameras inside my car, getting video suspension. So you can actually learn visually, seeing what the car is doing underneath the hood, and not just guesstimating what it's doing. And the HD quality is the best. So how would it say differ from like a GoPro or it's 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 easier to put in places, you know. These item cameras, they're 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 cylinders, you know, those GoPros, they're they cubes, like a Rubik's cube almost. <laughs> Not that big, but that's the best description. But if you could just get a three inch by inch long cylinder tube, put a camera in it that's half an inch wide, that is it right there. And you can about put them anywhere in the world. And they take great pictures. And actually, I was on my computer before you guys called making these new videos and downloading them to my laptop so I could send them to Ion and they, don't, they make really cool videos out of them. Now, what's the, uh, do they go up to 4K or are they just up to 1920 or 720? Um, I don't really know. I'm sorry, I can't answer, I can't answer that question. No problem, I'm, I'm looking it up online. <laughs> It'll go up to 1080p, so that's good. Yeah, uh, 1080p, that's frame rate? Um, that's the pixels, right? Uh, that's the resolution. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. It'd be, it'd be like 1920 by 1080. Yeah, the sun of the camera stuff's way over my head. <laughs> it looks looks pretty cool. We're sitting here looking at one of them mounted to the side of a car. Yeah, uh, on, on my social media sites, uh, my online Instagram time from about time from 58. I post videos on on my page a lot. I post things about them and about the company. You know, I just don't only use these for uh, my racing. You know, I one of my hobbies of mine is mountain biking. So, you know, I'll on the weekends when on the off weekends I'll go out in the mountains and I'll go put a camera on one of the roll mounts on my mountain bike and I'll take some really cool videos of me just. Rides the mountains, ride through the forest, and you get some great footage. Huh. Cool. So, uh, when are you going back down to Smyrna for more practice? Not till speed weeks, you know. We, yes, yesterday, on Tuesday, yesterday, we were very happy with what the car, what the car, what we had with the car, and we. We went down there and we thought we had a very successful test and we're confident what we're confident what we'll have coming back coming up to see with And Lori said she's gonna to try to get up with you down in New Smyrna and, and chat with you and do some interviewing with you. You know that that sounds great. I'm I I'd love to do that. Cool. If you're ever in New Smyrna itself, the little town itself if you go right to the end, I think it's Highway 44 that goes into town, 
and it will stop at the ocean. If you go any further, you're in the water. On the left, on the left where that road ends, on the left, there's a place called Breakers. Breakers has got the best hamburgers in Florida. No, that's good because I love hamburgers. Write, write that down and remember it. When you go into town and you stop at the water, right on the left is, a, is an oceanfront bar and grill that looks out over the water with an outdoor deck it's called Breakers. That's where you want to go for lunch. No, I'm right. sticking up. You know, okay. I, I heard somebody talking about in and out Burger before I started talking to you guys. And the funny thing is, is being from California, and that's where in and out Burger originated. Yeah, I know. Believe you know. me, I'm well aware of it. <laughs> <laughs> you know I get the double-double every time. Uh, God, you're making, you see, you're making me hungry now. I'm just... <laughs> When I, go to, when I go to Phoenix, when I used to go to Fontana, when I used to go to Sonoma, that was it. And I go to Palm, oh, I'll go to Palm Springs, I'll get one in, in April for the charity ride. I'll get, a, I'll get an in and out burger there, uh -huh. and I'll get one in Phoenix, that's our first stop, Phoenix. There you go. So you, you'll have your in and out burger. I'll have at least three on that ride. <laughs> go, to, go to Breakers on the left, when you have to stop, and you can't go any farther if you do you're in the ocean. And uh, great burgers there overlooking the water. So is that oh, as good no, as I, it? I, I'm trusting you. I'm going to try it out. Yeah. It's just different. Cool. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and let you get out of here. Go ahead and thank uh, us, your sponsors, and uh, go have fun down in New Smyrna. Well, thank you. Uh, you know, this year we've, we've had our last year's sponsors come out um, some of them come back on board you know, ion cameras uh canon filters hci construction and modern companies uh and autocraft technology you know they're all great companies and they all do great things you know and i'm very happy to have them back on board well man. i can't thank them enough all right tyler go ahead and uh, go back to having some fun and uh Al, you've been talking about in and out Burger. He's, he's now hungry and going to be drooling, ready to go eat. He's going to be let down at the Dane and In-N-Out Burger. That's you know, all right. You know, I, I'm, I'm a fan of a uh, steak and shake. You know, that, I think that's kind of the In-N-Out Burger of the East Coast. You know, I, you just can't beat. You just can't beat In-N-Out. I'm right. I'm the stamp, just stamp it. <laughs> the man knows his stuff. The best. To be so young, he's so wise. <laughs> <laughs> and you can talk to old timers even too, as long as you talk about an out burger. Oh, should I give him my old timer advice? Yeah, you better do that. Let he's me give you some advice. Young upcomer. Um, I have been a member of the motorsports media for forty some years. I have oh, been wow. every. I have been everywhere. I've covered everything. I've talked to everybody who's worth talking to. Uh, and let me give, give you some advice. If you're ever asked for an interview by a media person, they walk up to you, they introduce themselves, and they start asking you questions about anything. The first thing you do is you take off your sunglasses. Alright? Remember that. Yeah. Because that media person will be insulted to some degree that you don't think enough of him to look him in the eye. Alright? That's the first piece of advice. The second piece of advice is this. At some point during that interview, remember what his name is. If he says, hey, I'm Al Pierce, I'd like to talk to you, you say, fine. At some point during that interview, you mention his name to let him know you remember. Say something like, hey, that's a good question, Al, or uh, well, Al, we really don't do it that way. Whatever you, whatever an answer is going to be, work in his name one time, just so he'll remember that you know who he is, and that'll carry you a lot further than you can imagine. It'll be an important part of your, of your learning process. All right. You know, being as young as I am, and all the advice I can get, you know, thank you. And when you get to be a sprint cup, when you get to be a sprint cup champion, and they enter and they talk to you on TV, take off your sunglasses, please. <laughs> yep. 
Unless your name is Richard Petty. Right. And only then when you've won 200 races <laughs> and you've earned a right to keep the sunglasses on. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> That's, that's going to be a feat I'm going to try and accomplish. There you go. You keep that good advice close to heart. All right, uh, Tyler. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Tyler, we'll talk at you later. Let me Give me a shout back. Either uh, text me or shoot me a thing. Let me have you do it Thank you guys for your time. Yeah, I had a great time. Thank you. Certainly. Good night. Actually, Richard took off his sunglasses the other day when he did a TV interview <coughs> indoors, oh. which which I I'm not sure I've ever seen without his sunglasses. <laughs> I, I've been lucky enough to see him without sunglasses. No. Okay. So Anything what else I, happened besides your car mechanic? Yeah, we didn't. Yeah, we didn't that, was a pretty, was, that was a pretty cool story. It was the worst media tour ever. Was it? Was it that bad? Well, it's just too. They didn't. They didn't bring us any crew chiefs. Well, a few. Well, they, have, they don't even know who's going to be where. Everybody's well, changing. Well, some of them are. Mm -hmm. they, didn't, they, didn't bring us, they didn't bring us, some of the owners didn't show up. Um, none of the crew chiefs showed up. There was no swag whatsoever. Not even a pen. Not even a <laughs> notebook. Nothing. Well, you have the power of the pen right here. Well, Why don't you put the how things have changed? I didn't do a whole lot of good. <laughs> you may have your access revoked. Yeah, just awful. <laughs> just wonderful. And we didn't hear anything that we didn't expect to hear. Yeah. You know, we didn't we didn't talk to any drivers with new teams. Everybody except Chase Elliott was part of the Hendrick deal. Yeah. Um, Trevor Bain was part of the Roush deal. McMurray and Larson were there. All of the four. Hello, hello. Thanks for uh, Stuart Haas drivers were there. Um, McMurray and yeah, McMurray and um, um, Larson were there. Childress's drivers were there. So we didn't. I mean, just we'll hear the same things at Media Day at Daytona in two weeks yeah. that we heard last week. So, you know, we worked hard. Everybody seems to like the new downforce deal. Okay. They seem to like it. But Murray says we haven't gone far enough. Yeah. But Murray says he can, he can keep taking off downforce. It'll suit me. Uh, Michael McDowell says these cars have become too easy to drive. Anybody can do it. And, and he says these cars shouldn't be easy to drive. They yeah. should be hard to drive. This should not be something anybody can do walking in off the street. Should be where your driver shows their talent, not everybody he showing said, their he said, talent. He said, I want to showcase my ability, and if I can't showcase it, I don't belong out here. So he said, I'm happy, and most people are happy that it'll be harder to drive these cars. Yeah. Less grip, less downforce, less throttle time in the corner, more you got to you got to steer them more. They get sucker squirrely. Yeah. Back in the old legend car days. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Tony said, Tony said the guys who are used to hanging it out, which we've gotten away from hanging it out. Yeah. But guys that used to hang it out and really go up against the wall, that's, they're the guys who will be good. He, he, he said these, these people that just think it's straight ahead, easy, that's, that's gone. So. so. Because I, I feel that with that, NASCAR might actually gain some viewers back if it gets to be more competitive and more driver-driven. I don't know if you get anybody back. Because I think once people leave a particular thing, it's hard to come back to it. Now, I'm, I'm just speaking for myself. I quit watching local news at 6 o'clock years ago. Because it's just the same, you know. Somebody here. got shot, somebody got killed, yeah, somebody got run yeah. over. <laughs> and here's the weather. And, and the broadcast is from yeah. basically five-year-old mentality. Yeah, and once you get up, once and you get away from that, traffic camps. you're watching somebody yeah, really. else at six o'clock. So yeah. they might they might attract some some they might keep some new fans who weren't quite ready to to leave them. But then I can get back to a guy who's seventy years old 
they used to they used to watch Lorenzen and Pearson yeah. and those guys and, and quit ten years ago. They go get him back. He's yeah. gone. I mean, you still might get some that just recently yeah. left and fell asleep. Like I say, yeah. You know? New fans who have not yet gotten delusion, disillusioned by the whole thing. Yeah. Oh, man, did you see the race? The racing has gotten a lot better. And, and, and Tony oh, said man. something the other day on Sirius Satellite. He didn't say it in the media tour. Yeah. But Tony really went after Brian France the other oh, day. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I heard I saw, I saw that. that. Great. I heard that. Great. Get, get your ass down here in the pits with yeah. us. Yeah. Which his father and grandfather used to do all the time. Yeah. You had, a, you had a connection. And plus the guy that was trying to redo some of the other stuff hasn't a clue about what a car does. Oh, Gene right? Stefanopoulos or whatever his name is. Yeah, whatever they got in Yeah. yeah. What, so now what's your approach now that the, you're going to have a chase format in the Xfinity of the trucks? What do you think? Well, they proved it works in cup. You know, I'm surprised. What surprises me? My last comment before we go to dinner. My, my, <laughs> the one, no, no, don't keep asking me questions. No, no, but it may be a long. It may be a long comment. <laughs> my surprise is they didn't start to chase format in trucks and Xfinity and then go to Cup. Yeah, yeah. I'm surprised that they go that Street they're that Street they're Street working backward. You know, kind of like the caution clock. Let's just start the caution oh clock. Oh my God, cup. I don't. Uh, what is it with the caution clock? <sighs> In the truck series, you hardly ever have 20 minutes of racing anyway. <laughs> so it may not. Yeah. It may never become a factor. It will in some places. Uh, I wrote something for Auto Week saying at a time when fans have been on NASCAR about debris cautions yeah. to bunch up the field and create excitement. Now you're just saying, okay, we're not going. We're not going to have debris cautions anymore. We're just going to throw cautions <laughs> any way we want to. My suggestion would have been, okay, simply take the race, however many laps it might be. Say it's a 100-lap truck yeah. race somewhere. At 25 laps, you run them, throw a caution, and you have pit stops for 10 minutes, first quarter. Yeah. Second, halfway, same thing. Do it in quarters. Just tell people we're going we're gonna to break after 25 laps in 50 and then 75. What, what do you think Tony's thoughts would have been when he heard about the clock, the caution clock? About the what? What do you think Tony's thoughts would have been when he when he heard about the caution clock? Well, I'm, I think he's glad he's not a truck racer. <laughs> you know, I don't. He, you know, as much as he's, I know he's fussed about how many times are these mysterious cautions come from in the middle oh, yeah. of a sprint cup race. But I guarantee, if you look back on it. Every driver who complains about getting screwed by caution probably at some point benefited from yep. caution. Over a career, things even out. I feel like you can almost guarantee that people are going to sit back and watch the Daytona 500 for two and a half, three hours this year, and you're going to have a green, white, checkered finish. Almost. And it will absolutely ruin the race or because in the there's just not enough racing. No, like last time. Whoever was about to win is going to end up losing. Someone else who, you know, was had momentum, who was moving up from the middle of the pack somewhere, it's going to ruin their chance to get up there. But, it, but and if that's going to happen. But if it's a legitimate caution, you can't do much about it. Yeah. Right. You know, if it's well, just that's, a, that's it's the formula for these uh, super speedways. Yeah. It's a uh, race all day, and then the last 50 is a wreck fest, and mm -hmm. the the end of the race where you want maybe your driver is running 10th, you'd like to see him move up, there's no time to move right. up. So you're like, why am I going to watch this for three hours? On the big tracks, <laughs> take away their, their spoilers. You want to take Something. and scrub down That's what down Murray says, cut them down even less. Yeah. Well, the sure? drivers I heard were saying, so exactly what you were talking about with Tony, saying that with the previous package that they had, you couldn't get up behind somebody because you lost all your... Your downforce, but you had to have, keep air on the front of your car, and so that took away from being able to right. pull out, race side by side, and things like that. You know, and whoever was out front probably had a bigger advantage. But so hopefully, whatever the change, if it's, they're squirrely, and we're just going to see better racing and more action throughout the race. We'll see drivers actually racing, not just riding. Yeah. And, but I did say in an auto week piece I did, I said. At some point during this year, you can bet on it. The drivers are going to complain about the rules package. 
They're just it's just the way they are. You can't make everybody I know. happy. By the middle of the summer, somebody will say, you know what? I sure like last year's package. Because <laughs> well, I, I could race better because the car did better. And the other thing is that Jamie McMurray told us that NASCAR paid. They, they hired a bunch of aerodynamics engineers to study what to do. And those people, he said, were headed off on the absolute worst tangent possible. And then we created a 10-driver advisory council, and we asked if we could meet with those engineers. <laughs> and when we got in the room, we straightened them out, and we told them, you people are just headed for hell. This is awful. You can't do this. And he said, we had to take some of their advice. They had to take a lot of ours. But we're much better off with what we want than with what those engineers, who aren't racers, they're not NASCAR people. They're just aerodynamic engineers. They want to make the cars and they were getting, They were being paid. They were consultants. The famous consultant deal. And, and, and McMurray said, Hell, we did it for free. We told them, we told them for nothing. This is what you got to be doing. And he said they eventually came to the way we were thinking. So, I don't know this Gene, this Gene Stefanowski guy. I don't know how much longer he's going to stay, because nobody seems to respect him a lick, uh, not a bit. <laughs> especially the guy that hired him. Well, that may be true. Uh, all right, all right. We, all right. In and out, bird. Up, nothing else. I wish. All, all the crazy-ass stuff, everybody's changing around crew sheets everywhere. I know Tony's got a new one, uh, Danica, your favorite's got a new one. And well, she's had three now in three years. Yeah, so she's... Make it four. It's a yearly changeover for her. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't know, I, I'd almost like to see Zippy get back into the crew chief and with Tony again. They had such a good... Mm -hmm. Did Zippy have a chance with Danica? I think he did, didn't he? Yeah, he, I think he did was... Did he try one year with her? I don't think he... No, I don't think he did it with her. Or did he just go straight to car chief or mm -hmm. whatever chief? Mm -hmm. I think Tony Gibson was her first crew chief. Okay. And... Kost, K-O-S-T, somebody, was her crew chief last year. And then late in the year they changed again. And this year it's somebody all to get the difference. So, I don't know. <laughs> C-O-S-T? Cost him his job. Yeah, K-O-S-T. Cost him his job. All right, everybody, we enjoyed y'all joining in, watching the show tonight. And we'll catch everybody next week on Let's Talk Racing. Good night.